Hey guys, Zach here, and welcome back to another action figure review, and today we'll be taking a look at the SH Figuarts Gomera. Now, this character comes from the 1966 series Ultraman, which I've talked about a couple times in the past, so I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I think it's a good show, I do really like it. Uh, I think it goes on for a little too long, but still, I think the original Ultraman is a very good show, and I definitely recommend that you check it out. Uh, most of the episodes are free to watch on YouTube, so if you do want to watch Ultraman, then there you go. Anyway, uh, Gomura here, honestly, I think might just be my favorite Ultra Kaiju. Uh, when I was a kid, like, 2007, 2008, that sort of, like, time frame, uh, one video on YouTube that I watched a lot, uh, Red King Attacks, where basically, uh, Red King from Ultraman just fought a bunch of Godzilla monsters, and for a little bit, I always liked Red King. And then at some point, um, I saw Bolton, and I thought he looked really cool, but after watching the original Ultraman series, yeah, no, I kind of think, um, Gomorrah's my favorite Ultra Kaiju, you know? I love his design, I love his roar, you know, I think his powers are cool, and I think, like, the episodes that he debuted in, you know, the two-parter Monster Highness episode, I think, um, you know, I really like those episodes, and yeah, I don't know, Gomera, he's just really cool to me, I don't, like, I don't know why, I just really like Gomera, he's, again, my favorite Ultra Kaiju, but I digress. Anyway, I don't really have a whole lot else to say, so let's just get right into this. Like usual, uh, to start this review, I'll take a quick look at the paint, and the painting on this figure I think looks very solid. So, right off the gate here, we can see that this figure is mostly brown, with uh, various different shades of like blacks and like brighter browns, which I think looks really nice on this figure. You know, really, really gives like it really makes the detailing pop here. You know, uh, his uh, toenails here, and his little ankle dew claw things here are painted a yellowish whitish color, which I think looks nice. And same for his elbow. Duclaw, whatever this is, it's painted white, and his fingernails are also painted white. Uh, going to his head here, we can see that his eyes are painted white with black pupils, and there's a little bit of, like, a pink finish to his eyes. I don't know if you can see that, or maybe I'm just tripping, but uh, there's, like, the eyes are painted nicely, and there's, like, little bits of, like, red around the eyes, which looks nice. Uh, his uh, crests here have a bunch of... Um, Really cool uh, designs here, which I think look nice. His horn here is painted the same color as his beak, which is a sort of like a grayish, like brownish sort of color, which I think looks okay. Uh, his teeth are painted a yellowish whitish color as well. And the inside of his mouth is painted a glossy red. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the painting on this figure. Um... It's really nice, you know, he's looking, like, forward, he doesn't have, like, derpy eyes or anything like that, which is, you know, kind of common for Monster Arts figures. I know this is, like, figure arts, not Monster Arts, but still, like, the painting on this figure is very solid, is what I'm trying to say. So, the painting on this figure is great. Definitely gets a pass. Now, we'll take a look at the articulation, and the articulation on this figure is, again, very solid, just like the paint. Uh, the base of the head here is on a ball joint as well as this part of the neck here, and the base of the neck here, so Gomorrah can look up really far, which I think is really cool. You do have a little bit of a gap here, which, there you go. And he can look down, like so. His shoulders here are on ball joints, and we do have a couple joints in the elbow here, this hand likes to pop off, like, easily for some reason. I don't know why, but... Yes, as you can see, uh, his hands are on ball joints. Let's pop that in there. Uh, his mouth can open and close. I forgot to point that out earlier. He has an ab crunch, so he can look down like so. Or not look down, but go down like that. And he can move upwards like so, which, you know, is nice. And he can move uh, side to side a little bit here. His legs are on ball joints. There's a bend in the knee here. And the ankles are on ball joints. Now for the tail here, we just have a bunch of segments here. So you can move the tail 
any way you want, which is really cool. Uh, towards the end here, I wish there were a few more joints because, I don't know, this t looks a little too, like, zigzaggy. I would prefer more of, like, a smoother... I mean, that looks fine, don't get me wrong, but, like, I feel like more joints in the tail would have been a little nicer, but I digress. But all the joints on this figure are very nice, so nothing, nothing is going to, like, get loose over time, and... Yeah, no, this figure is very nice to pose. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the articulation on this figure. Uh, the articulation here, I think, is very solid. So, the articulation here, I'd say, definitely gets a pass. Gomorrah also comes with a pair of fists, so he can punch Ultraman for calling his mom fat. Uh, I would show you guys how they look on the figure itself, and this time it's not because I'm lazy, like with the Ultraman figures I reviewed. Um... I tried to get these on, and these just won't pop on for me. I don't know why, but still, though, uh, these do look nice. So in the episode of Ultraman that Gomorra debuted in, um, he gets his horn broken off by Ultraman. Or, I think it was by, it was either by Ultraman or the SSSP. I could be wrong. Either way, um, at some point in that episode, the second part anyway, um, his horn gets broken off. And this little piece right here, like his, um... Basically, the figure, you can take off his horn and replace it with this piece, but I just trim my nails, and this is, like, such, like, a small piece, like, I probably wouldn't be able to get this out if, you know, I replaced the horn in this video, so I'll put up a picture of what that looks like, but, yeah, if I had nails, like, I'd try, but I just cut my nails, so, unfortunately, I can't show you, like, what it looks like on the figure in hand, but just know that you can't do that with this piece. Now for the best accessory for last, uh, we have this uh, alternate tail piece here. Uh, in the original Ultraman, um, the SSSP managed to shoot Gomer's tail off, and they included that here as an accessory, and again, I just think this looks really nice, you know, it's easy to uh, pop it, you know, on and off the figure, unlike with the hands and the, you know, alternate horn piece, but still, like, um, I don't know, I just think this looks really cool, I dig it, I really do dig it, but... I digress. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for the accessories here. Now, uh, we'll take a look at the sculpting on this figure. And the sculpting on this figure, I think, looks really solid. You know, I think it's honestly pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to what we see in Ultraman. You know, I think um, all the proportions look good. They look, you know, accurate. And, yeah, like, the sculpting here just looks really nice. I don't know, like... It, it's just tough for me, because, like, sometimes, like, I don't really have a lot to say about the sculpting, other than just it looks nice, because, again, there's nothing, like, really wrong here as far as the sculpting goes. I mean, I guess, I wish the horn here was a little sharper, but that's kind of a nitpick. Like, overall, like, yeah, this is just a really nice-looking sculpt. What do you want from me? Gets a pass. Now, we'll take a look at the detailing. And the detail on this figure, I think, looks very nice. So let's take a closer look at that. So starting off at the head here, we can see all the uh, bits of detailing in the face here, all the bits of musculature here, I think looks really nice. You know, the detailing in the mouth, again, very solid. Uh, going to the neck here, again, we just have a bunch of uh, really nice, like, creases and folds in the skin here, which I think is detailed, you know, very nicely. And even, like, uh, the back here, with all this, like, it's not fur. I don't, like, it's not, like, scales either, but, like, I don't know what this, uh, this bit is. I mean, obviously, like, for the suit, this is where, like, the zipper was, but still, um, yeah, I don't know, like, what you would consider this. But the detailing on this part is detailed very nicely. Everything here is very nicely defined. Uh, the front of the torso here. Again, we have a lot of really nice detailing here. Uh, this looks more like scaling, but again, like, I don't really know what this is exactly, but still, it looks nice. Detailed very nicely. The arms have a very nice bit of detailing here as well. And the legs here. Again, the same, just a bunch of uh, creases and wrinkles and whatnot, just detailed very nicely. Uh, the tail here. Again, just a lot of really nice detailing here, like all of the, you know, like scaling on top here, and all of the, 
you know, like wrinkles and creases in the tail here. It's just detailed very nicely, very well defined. And yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it for the detail on this figure. Uh, the detail on this figure, I think, looks very solid. And actually, there is no end. The detailing here is just very solid. So the detailing here, I'd say, definitely gets a pass. Now, we'll do some size comparisons. Here we have the SH Figuarts Ultraman. Uh, I think these two look really nice together, so it's going to be great to take some pictures with these guys. Uh, here we have the Bandai Ultra Monster Series, Gomera. I actually have a few Ultra Monster Series figures in my collection, but I don't want to review them because I think they're a little stinky. They're not bad figures or anything like that. In fact, I do like them, but just look how small they are. Like, they don't scale with anything in my collection. It's just very... It's just not cool, the scaling here for the Ultra Monster Series figure. So, yeah. If you want me to review them, I'll review them. But I don't plan on reviewing them. But I digress. Anyway, of course, here we have some hand sanitizer. And here we have Dr. Billy Grant. So at the end of the day, should you get this figure? I'd say yes. I think the painting here is great. I think the articulation here is also great. Uh, the accessories, though there's not a lot here, you know, we at least still get accessories, and the accessories we do get are still pretty cool. Uh, the sculpting, the detailing, overall, this is just a really nice figure, and I definitely recommend that you pick this guy up. Um, unfortunately, uh, this guy is very, very expensive. And by very expensive, I mean not expensive at all. This guy, MSRP for this guy is about 72 bucks, which is not bad at all. It's still pricey, don't get me wrong. Like, this is a higher-end figure, so of course, like, he's not going to be super cheap. But, still, like, there are other figures that cost way more than this guy, so 72 bucks is not bad at all. Which also begs the question, just really quick, why is this figure, you know, a figure that actually comes with accessories, why is this figure only $72, but the upcoming SH Monster Arts Godzilla Minus One Godzilla figure that comes with no accessories costs over $100? Like, I don't get that. That makes no sense. No sense at all. But I digress. I mean, granted, I still bought it. But that's besides the point. That's besides the point. Either way, this figure is really nice, both as far as the quality goes and the price tag goes. It's just, it's just great. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, that is it for today. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Zach out.